Come on, Laura. Come on. Let's do this. Come on. Let's go do chores. Good girl. She came down for grandma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. You are so cute. She so came down for grandma. She yes. wasn't coming. Come it grows super fast. Quick pro tip for you. If your chicken area smells and then they're one spot, put down some sort of carbon. In this case, it's wood shaving. What's the matter? This. Oh. That's a good sign. They're lively enough to jump the border. I love Laurel's look every morning. Just don't eat them, okay, Laurel? We've turned off our brooder light and we want to transition these guys out to pasture soon, before they're three weeks old, so we're kind of hardening them off, hardening them off, if you, if you will. They're laid out super fast. Oh, guineas are super fast. Even when they're young, cotton. Let's see it. Why did you want to catch it? I want, I want, I want to make them not scared of us. Okay. Here they are. Here they are. They are scared of us right now. Papa, Papa. You can't find a scooper for what? For our scooping poop. Oh, scooping poop out of the broody hens. Let's call that the broody breaker. Let's go see how they're doing. I think we, I think we need to pull out some water. No, it's actually really firm in it. It's really good. Well, Papa, I can't catch it if it's at the bottom. Oh, okay. I can't get to the Do you bottom. need some feed this morning? Yeah. Okay, here. I'll help you. Let's see what this is. Uh, here. Let's see your colander. Let's make sure it's not mold. No, it's not mold. It would uh, smell moldy if it was mold. It smells sour, so we're I good. Let's get to the bottom. Okay, you just go down all the way. I don't want to touch that with my hand. Oh. <laughs> One of our problems is we're barely having to feed our pigs any grain. Because we're getting so much farm product, skim milk, food scraps. Lily, you want to go look at the broody hen? Okay, they're alive and well. Hey, that's a way to test if they're broody, still broody, Gideon. I think it's going to take three days, but you go in there and see if they puff up. Go on, go pet one of them. You. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> See how she puffs up? She's still broody. Not so much. Look. Not so much. That one is broody. Attacking me. That one's running. See the difference? So we're going to keep them in here. It's until they stop doing that. When they go broody, they're not laying any more eggs. They're ready to sit on some eggs. And they kept getting eggs in the coop, like this endless supply of eggs, and nothing's ever hatching because we don't have a rooster to fertilize those eggs. So it can be a problem. This right here is a bulletproof way to break your broody hen. Get a cage. This is just a big dog crate that we had. Uh, you don't have to do it this big. You could do it twice as small food and water in there and we put down a piece of cardboard so that we can so for when they manure we can easily pick it up it doesn't get on our crate the key is no eggs no bedding and eventually it'll break I've seen some take as many as three days I've never seen it go over three days looks like the yellow one oh look she's puffing up a little bit there that's how you test you come in and you grab them and you see if they puff up, puff up and growl at you. No! Versus run. So they attack you if they're broody. They puff up and attack and they run if they're not. Papa, can I own them? Do you want to own these guys? Mm -hmm. Can you remember what they look like? Mm -hmm. Will you be the one that takes charge mm -hmm. and feeds and waters them? Mm -hmm. Checks yeah. their brood? Okay. I like to call this the broody breaker. What's going on, buddy? These potatoes nice. are huge. That's from our potato patch. Now wait, was that just from one plant? 
That was, we have a few more from other ones that are smaller, medium size in them. From the same plant? Yep. Yeah, I would think there might be more than three under one plant, so make sure, okay? Yep, I've, um, I, I, did, I made sure and I got these two. Awesome. Look how much we what? got from two plants. That's, that's two plants? Yeah, but the brown ones were more small, and I think the moles ate some of them too. Okay, well, so, we'll share with the moles. Yeah. If we get that much, we're happy to share with the moles. And then now we have a fresh breakfast. Yeah. What beats eggs and fried potatoes for breakfast? Maybe a little sausage on the side, maybe. I'm gonna go get some Swiss chards. What, what are those cups for? Strawberries and raspberries and beets. Okay, you all ready? Yeah, let's go. We got more than just potatoes ready. Right there, right here. Do you wanna look? Oh, look look right here. Tomatoes. Look right here, Jonah. Yeah. Look at this huge beet. Are you kidding me? Should I put that in our um, bucket? And the greens are delicious too. Yeah. Okay, just get the big ones. That big or bigger. Save the other ones. Don't get them if they're too small. Oh no, that's a little small. That's okay if you got it, you can't put it back. So maybe grab two more. Grab two more, Jonah. Here, you want me to help you? Ha! Huge guy. There you go. Oh yeah. All right, maybe one more. That guy's pretty big. Okay. Yeah. At the others, look, but, we got a whole harvest of beet greens. You think the cabbage is ready? No, the bugs are getting it. Oh, uh, yeah. You I mean, that. you want to? Yeah. Now, cabbage go good with breakfast. Cabbage and potatoes and eggs. Oh, my. And, and, and strawberries and raspberries. It does get better than just eggs and potatoes, doesn't it? Fried cabbage. The, I, think, I think we should get should it. Should we I love it with cabbage. our lemon? I think we should. I love cabbage. It's a little early, but it is exciting, and we do have more coming on. Let's see that one. That. And we want to make sure we get it before the slugs do. Let's leave the let's leave the slug infested part as mulch. Yeah. Papa, hey Papa, what do you do that for? Just make that mulch. We're forgetting something, Jonah. <laughs> I'll kiss it. You kiss it again? You get two kisses? Three. Nice. <laughs> that, that's my fifth kiss. Okay. Start first at the strawberries. Okay, let's go. Heading over to the strawberry patch. Look. We got some good pumpkinage coming in. Good pumpkinage. Okay. Are you finding any? I'm finding some. Just gotta. This is what. Look. I think we've got them all for now. I think these are these bear one time a year. Hold on. Here's one. Here's a couple just, uh, see them in there? I like your harvesting cup there, buddy. Yeah. Strawberries are in good hands. Mr. Brown's calling me. Come and get him. They're all we can get. Okay. I know where some grapes are, but they're not right. Okay, cool. We have grapes now. Yeah. Yeah, our cars are oh. pretty close. We have some wild grapes growing on our fence. Ooh, look. What? That's nice. Yeah. That's completely volunteer it's taking it's making that fence multi-purpose it's to fence to keep the animals in it's also a trellis for grapes you coming mr. Brown I bet you want to jump I bet he wants to jump <laughs> oh my word do you see this raspberry patch you guys would be all day in here it gets bigger and bigger every year yeah more and more you guys harvest raspberries. Mr. Brown, you want to go work on the chickens? Come on. What we have is chickens that are still young, so young they can get out of the electric poultry net. I want to train them because I think they're near close enough. We have some chickens that are going to come to mom's kitchen garden and we have some that are going to go to the crop garden. The problem is, these chicks are getting out of this fence. I actually ordered this, I think this is a fence that's made to move every day. It's got, it's really long between the poles. And so it sags. And so then, these nets are made tight netting at the bottom so chicks can't get through it. But when it sags, they're gonna easily get through it. One thing I'm gonna do, I have two nets on this. Eliminate it to one net, that way it can be a higher shock It'll be a more powerful shock. And then I'm going to take posts and put them up in between to support these sagging fences. 
Does that sound like a plan, ladies and gentlemen? Looks like we've been feeding you in the same spot too long. They're wearing it out. Okay, hang on. There's eight posts in one strand, so that I think that means I can go one across and then three posts down. I do have to pull up one entire, entire side of this fence. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully everybody doesn't just get out. So take me back to the good old days. Hey, you got your tester? Okay, let's see what it's at now. What was that just before? We did one thing and that's... 60. We improved it. Last time it was at 40. So that will help. Also, if we go and mow, if we go in Jonah, if we go in string trim, we're not gonna have time this morning, maybe this afternoon, we'll go in string trim. Double string trim. The, we'll mow and string trim. And underneath here, up. underneath where it's hitting. Yeah. And then there's one other thing we can do. Oh, we can support, we can bring posts and support these. You ready? Let's take a break. Uh oh, that? Mr. Brown got a bike. He got wheel, look at it wheel. You excited about that, Mr. Brown? Hey, you think you're ready to learn how to ride a bike? Yeah. All right. Does that feel all right, Gideon? Yeah. Okay, feels good? Yeah. You wanna go try it on the road? Yeah. Can you do it, Mr. Brown? No, I don't, I don't like to do it. I don't, I don't like to do it. You want Josiah to help you? Yeah, By the way, we are on a very low traffic road here. Dead end. Oh. All right, let's see. Let's see you do it. Oh, there you go. There you go. So one day we were sitting up on the porch. We looked out and we saw Jonah, four years old, pedaling a bike down the street. I never helped him, never. And we were just so shocked and amazed. It was because he had one of those, a balance bike, and then he had a pedal bike similar and he just jumped on it one day. It was crazy. Jonah's cleaning out our tack room. Look, you can walk. Boy. We're uncovering all kinds of mysteries here, aren't we? Huh. Grow lights, shade cloth, insulators. This morning, our fence to our chicks was at a six. I um, guarantee you it's higher now because it's just dry. But let's just see how high we can get that thing hitting. The good news is that everybody's in, I think. Is anybody out? Everybody's still in, although it is an evening. They like to go in in the shade during the heat. Wow, it's all the way up to eight. Six, nine, six point nine, six point seven. Let's go with six point seven. Jonah, let's see what we can do by just string trimming it. Now let's test it after we've string trimmed it. Do it on the same, do it at the same spot. Put it all the way in the ground. That's funny. We went down. How'd we go down? What's yours read, Jonah? 80. Okay. Let's make sure, man. I don't know what's going on. Okay. This is not a very accurate experiment, is it? 5.7. <laughs> We dropped one degree. <laughs> now, Jonah, let's get the fence off the ground where it's hitting with other posts. Let's take those. You, you want some help? Yeah. The fence looks good, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's hitting still. Turn off. But we brought it up. <laughs> Not even to where we started. I know that can't be true. This is not hitting. This is not hitting. I do hit it. I do hear it though. It is hitting somewhere. Do you guys hear that? Well, who knows? It's gotta be hitting harder. This evening, it'll tell. That'll, that'll tell us. Do we keep these chicks in? This evening, we'll see. It's evening, 8.20. 
The question is, are the chicks still inside of that fence? If they are, it's telling me it's very possible for them to stay inside the fence at this age. It means we can move them into their permanent farm soon, the big ladies. If not, it means we just have to keep doing this until they're big enough to not get through this fence. Ha ha. Everybody is safe and sound inside of the electric poultry net. Good job guys, we have these support posts in. We have it mowed around the edge.